went to heaven knowing that the entire family was one. And I thought, well, if I, if that man could share that story with me after my speech, I'll mention about the Lord Jesus. And that's exactly what happened. I, I delivered my speech and then I shared how Jesus had become real to me. You could have heard a pin drop. And then the, the chairman of the Scottish branch introduced the other main speaker. His name was Ian Telford. And he got up and the first words out of his mouth were as follows. He said, ladies and gentlemen, I had no idea what your national president was going to say. But I carry the surname of one of the two greatest engineers this country has ever produced. One was Isambard Kingdom Brunel, and the other one was Thomas Telford. Telford is my surname. And Telford is also a town very close to where John lives, down in the West Midlands. But I want to tell you tonight that Thomas Telford loved the Lord Jesus. And every time he uh, had built a structure, bridges, etc., in this country, he publicly knelt down and gave thanks to God and asked that people pass over his structures in perfect safety. He said, I want to say to you tonight that the people in this nation need to give thanks to the God he's kept his hand upon this, this land. We need to give him the honour that's due his name. You know, you could have heard a pin drop. And anyhow, at that point, he left. I never spoke to him. I wasn't even introduced to him because he arrived late and he left early. Anyhow, the rest of the top table party left. And as we were exiting the door, this lady rushed up to me. And she says, you know, that was wonderful. I've only been a Christian two years. And just a few weeks ago, I was baptized. Anyhow, that man who put his arms around my shoulders came and did the same again. And with a tear in his eye, he put his arm around my shoulder and said, I've never heard anyone speak about Jesus in quite the way you did tonight. I want to tell you, I was born in the Western Isles of Scotland and religion was rammed down my throat and I totally rebelled against it. But you know him, you know him. And that's all he kept on saying. And I just want to conclude this evening by saying, do you know him? Do you know him as your own personal Lord and Saviour? Because he's reaching through all eternity, because he loves you that much. If you would never invited Jesus to be Lord of your life, I'm going to pray a very simple prayer right now. And if you'd like to pray along with me, Jesus can become real to you, just as he's become real to me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for me. Forgive me for all the sins that I've done in my life. I turn away from them and I turn to you. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Help me to live from this moment on as your faithful servant for the remainder of my life. Thank you for dying for me, Lord. Thank you that you're my Lord and my Saviour. I give you all the thanks and praise. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, you're born again. Jesus is Lord of your life. May God bless you all this evening. That concludes what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. Amen. Now, if you have prayed that prayer, asking Jesus to come into your life, we would really like to hear from you. So if you go to our website, uh, lifestoriesworldwide.com and contact us there. We have our WhatsApp number as well. And we would love to hear you and help you in any way we can. Now, John uh, uh, was uh, uh, former chairman of the National Council of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International. Now, I have to keep practicing that, Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International. And one of the things that uh, uh, the uh, this group was very, um, its ministry, one of its main callings was encouraging men to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and to experience the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit, which is a very key part of our walk with Jesus. And John, please.
that that is a wonderful ministry of this fellowship. And would you would you kindly uh, explain what that means to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? You've you've spoken about some of these things, but could you could you um, speak about it a bit more and how somebody can experience the whole the Holy Spirit in all His fullness for themselves? Well, I can only share what was my experience. Very simply, um, you know, if we call upon the name of the Lord and we want him to fill us, he's there to fill us. You know, the, uh, paraphrasing one of the scriptures, it says, if a child asks his father for bread, would he give him something else? Uh, he won't. And he won't deny the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. You have to ask. And if you ask with sincerity and ask with total belief, the Holy Spirit will come upon you as he did upon those early disciples on the day of Pentecost. And it's initially followed by the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That was my experience. Jesus is the baptizer. He's the one who fills us to overflowing with his love, his power and his peace. And uh, it's transformed my life, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I commend it to you. Uh, now, John, one, one thing you, you talk about you know, speaking in other tongues, right? Mm. You know, you know, people watching this, not Christians, not, not Christian background, uh, and, uh, you know, um, the, the, there's all sorts. And that's a, that's a very strange... Yeah, what 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 what's this speaking in other tongues? Like that? That's, that sounds pretty weird stuff to me. Well, it does indeed, and it was strange to me, but very simply, um, in a wonderful way, the Lord gives you a, a whole new language that you've never learned. Uh, it manifests in all sorts of different ways. Uh, I mean, there are occasions um, I, when I've been present. Um, when I, I remember once I was in in the uh, Hague at a, an international convention. And um, there were some guys from this country and we were crossing over a road and you had to cross over a, a covered a, a footbridge. And um, these guys from England started suddenly speaking in some strange language, which wasn't English by any means. And in fact, there were some other people who were already on the bridge. and. Uh, they they spoke perfect English. And afterwards, we learned that what these guys were speaking was actually ancient or an, an, uh, an old Dutch. But what they were doing was praising the Lord. But quite unconsciously, they were speaking in uh, the old Dutch language. Quite remarkable. Um, it's just a gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, Peter. Um, when he got up on the day of Pentecost and the other disciples were speaking in all sorts of languages, which at that time, the people who came from different parts of the then known world um, heard the message of God in their own language, totally supernatural. And uh, that can happen today. Sometimes, though, it, it's a language that is not a known language as such, but it's a language that God himself has given to that individual. And why does he give it? Why does he give it? I, I think it's a sign that you you are, if you like, filled with God's spirit and that he wants you, uh, if you like, to exercise that gift because, you know, we're speaking mysteries unto God himself when we do. That's what the word of God tells us. I, I must admit, I find this very interesting myself. And I was always very, personally, I was always very uh, skeptical. I think we could, uh, we, we could 
talk about this a, a long time. Yes, indeed. I think I think one I think one person uh, uh, personally I, I was once uh, in in Poland and uh, uh, this man he uh, he did start uh, speaking in a, in a in another tongue, but it turned out to be English, and that was the uh, it was only me and the uh, interpreter who could who could uh, um, speak English and understand English. And uh, um, I was just uh, just absolutely amazed by that. And uh, and I thought, when I get back home, they're not going to believe this. And I was absolutely correct. They didn't believe me. They thought <laughs> I was nuts. So uh, <laughs> now we ha- hand over to Eric, you know, so uh, 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 Eric Woodward now, and uh, he's got a few questions uh, for you. We can hear a little bit more about your story. Hello, John. Hi, it's Eric. Good to hear from you tonight. I think I've known you for about 30 or 40 years, and it's the first time I've heard your testimony fully, and it's been great. Thank you. Glory to Jesus. Amen. One of the best testimonies we've had for a long time, and we've had some very, very good ones. Well. He, all the glory belongs to Jesus. I, I can only share what what has actually happened in my own life, um, and uh, you know, it, it's not always easy. I, I said that right at the be- beginning. You know, the last twelve months have been difficult. Just last November, I, I had to have emergency surgery, and it, it was touch and go. I was told at one stage, um, and normally, you know. I, I, uh, there have been situations when I've got very anxious and fearful, but at that particular time, quite remarkably, I had I really could tell you that I had the peace of the Lord. It was just absolutely remarkable. Amen. Wonderful. Apart from speaking in this country, you've been to Russia and other places I, i've spoken it's many times in america I, i've spoken many many times the lord's opened doors i have spoken in america i've spoken on american christian tv and norwegian christian tv hungarian christian tv um it's the lord who opens the doors um it's it's absolutely remarkable on one occasion i, I um we were in Phoenix, Arizona at a, a convention. And um, I, sh- I was briefly asked to share about um, Freemasonry and, or that testimony. And, and I did. In America, they refer to them as Masons. They don't. Uh, and um, I shared just as I've shared earlier on. And right at the end of the meeting, this man came up to me and he said, my wife and I have driven hundreds of miles to be present at this convention. And he said, um, I'm, a, I'm a Mason. But he said, on the way, I stopped my car for some while uh, because I felt led by the Spirit to do so. And we got out uh, of the car and I went up to my wife and I just simply said, darling, where are we going to Phoenix? I'm going to hear something that'll totally change my life. Anyhow, he came to the meeting and I spoke and he came up to me, he said, here, look, here's a Masonic ring. Now, I didn't even know about such things, but apparently in America, an awful lot of Freemasons wear a Masonic ring. I didn't mention it at all, but he said, I've destroyed it already. He'd already gone to destroy it, and he said, I just want you to know. It's very easy to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Life Stories at Lunch, to receive notifications of when we are live. Simply click the bell. I've severed my links with Freemasonry, and that was the way I did it. I destroyed the Masonic ring that was on my finger. 
remarkable. Your first talk in part was timing. Yeah. And I think um, from my own part, I was a teenager. I was, I loved the Lord. I was invited to be a Freemason. And um, I saw something on the telly about them rolling their trousers up and everything. And I thought, it just come to my mind, no, I don't want to be. And I brushed it to one side. And uh, I just thank God that I did. Absolutely. It is a deception. It's a deceptive spirit and it takes people away from the Lordship of Jesus. Yes. What about um, Russia? Well, John White and I went, I actually was invited to go and speak over there. And I have to say, at the time I went, the warmth of the Russian people was remarkable. What did surprise me was, you know, out of the main cities, it still seemed uh, quite uh, quite difficult. The roads were poor, and uh, but the people were warm and welcoming. Uh, I remember I... Uh, the full gospel over there uh, just uh, I, I was the first speaker at a new uh, um, chapter that they opened uh, in moscow just a mile off red square and it was uh, on on easter sunday when i spoke which was uh, i think two weeks after when we celebrate easter and uh, it was they were absolutely lovely they um gave my wife, Margaret, a wonderful bouquet of flowers, which we were able to get on board the plane to return. But then they'd uh, organized a party and it was held in another part of Moscow, many, many miles. And the, the, one of the leaders in Russia had driven all the way from St. Petersburg just to be present. The warmth of the people um, was just tremendous. It's so sad to see what is happening at the present time. But, you know, there are many wonderful Christians in Russia and I pray that their eyes will be open to what is actually happening in that country. Amen. Yes, I believe that. It's terrible what's happening out there. Yeah. You mentioned that Alan Jones asked you to go and speak in Wales and you'd never spoken before. Yeah. But you stood out in faith and did it. Uh, well, but, you know, the word, and it was quite interesting because one of the words that I read today uh, was, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. And I said, thank you, Lord. That's a word for me. I was, I have to tell you, Eric, um, Chris, who's alongside me, who's helped with the technical side of tonight. I, I was really nervous about this evening. It's something I hadn't done before. But, you know, Jesus is Lord. And, and, you know, he never, ever leaves us or forsakes us. He's there all the time. We all have problems in our lives. But one thing that we can hold on to, that he is who he claims to be, the eternal living son of God, our saviour, our Lord. Amen. Amen. It's wonderful to hear what you're saying. Alan's a great man. And, oh, uh, I love him. To, we love him dearly. He, he came to my church last year and carried out a, uh, or conducted a healing service and all sorts of people were touched and blessed. Uh, it's just a wonderful man of God. And before we stop tonight, I wonder whether we could pray for Alan and pray for George Collins. They're both the men that uh, lead the meeting and lead the chat afterwards. And both of them are not feeling very well. Could, would you pray for them, John? I'd be delighted to. And, and, you know, we can all pray the prayer of agreement. You know, where two or more agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be done by their Father in heaven. And so, Father, this evening, we just lift up Alan and George. Lord, you know their need. But, Lord, we speak health and life to their mortal bodies. 
Father, we bind any spirit of sickness upon the, uh, both of them and we lose healing and deliverance and we come in agreement. And Lord, where we come in agreement, you'll move and act. So, Father, we thank you for them both. We thank you for their witness and for their stance for the Lord Jesus. We speak healing to their mortal bodies right now and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Thank you for sharing with us tonight. It's been one of the strongest testimonies that we've had. Um, and Freemasonry is quite strong in this country. And uh, we need to see it broken. Indeed. And thank you that you've shared that. And this meeting will be going out time and time again. And people will be listening to it. So thank you for sharing with us. And I'll pass back to John Watt. Thanks, Eric. Great to see you. Thank you. John, it has, it has been really special. Like, really special. I've personally I've enjoyed it very much. And you've made uh, you've made it very clear about the need, if you want to be a, a true follower of Jesus, to you need to uh, renounce Freemasonry. And uh, uh, we uh, thank you very much for tonight. So uh, remember, we want you to get into contact with us. Okay, lifestoriesworldwide.com. And you, there's Spotify, YouTube, Facebook. But we would love to hear from you. And we will pray for you because each one of you is special. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And next week at the same time, uh, we have uh, our, our speaker will be uh, Jim Wilkinson. I haven't read his write up, but I remember that uh, a name from my past, I think, mm -hmm. in connection with Hollybush Fellowship in uh, Yorkshire. And I think he, he has an amazing, a miraculous uh, story to tell. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. And I hope you are too. And God bless you and good night. Good night. Good night. Yes. Good night, John. Good night.